I'm waiting on notification. Okay, perfect. Okay, boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this evening. We have an incredible guest with us all the way from the West Coast out in Phoenix, Arizona, Brother Amin Muhammad. He's going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration. And on behalf of myself, my family, and the view viewing audience, we want to extend the greetings of Asalaamu Alaikum, sir. Wa Alaikum Asalaam, sir, to you and your family and your viewing audience. Yes, sir. But I mean, this means very much, I mean, it means a lot to all of us. I'm look, I've been looking forward to this interview, and I look forward to hearing your amazing uh, testimony, sir. The first yes, question sir. that we want to know is, when was the first time you heard the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? The first time I heard the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad was in 1972. Mm. Yes, sir. And 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 where where did you hear him? Like, how did that come about in 1972? Okay, here's the story. Um, I was I was well. My mother ran a. She was the director of a medical clinic on 116th Street in Harlem, mm. and that was right down the street from Moss Number Seven. So. Uh, Minister Farrakhan came down there and met my mother and he wanted to set up something where the children could come down there and get exams and see a physician. So they set it up and my mother told him that she was having a lot of trouble with her son. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she said, could, you, could the Muslims do something with him? So Minister Farrakhan asked her, she told me, is your son strung out on drugs? So she said, she said, no. He said, no, we can do something with him. He said, I want to arrange, arrange to meet him. Mm. So I got an invitation to go and meet with a brother by the name of Brother Clark. He was the uh, dean of the University of Islam mm. um, at 7B. And he became uh, Muhammad Sadiq, I believe. And became the imam in Indianapolis, I think. And so he invited me over to his house on a Friday um, evening and I brought two friends of mine. And it was December 23rd on a Friday night. Yeah. And he got on the piano and he started playing Christmas songs. Mm. And I thought that was quite odd. I'm like, I'm <laughs> playing Christmas songs. So, he said, I can play these songs now, brother, because I know who the Christ is. And I know who the Lord is, who you know, is bringing joy to the world. Mm. So I was pretty impressed with that. And he, he played and sang and <laughs> he was very happy, very upbeat. So he invited us to come out that Sunday, which was gonna be New Year's, I mean, Christmas Eve. And so on, on Christmas Eve, I called my friends and both of them declined to, to go. So I was saying, well, I'm going. And so I went and at that time I was very lost. And that's why my mother had told them that I needed some help. You know, I, um, I was ready to turn to a life of crime. And uh, then I decided I couldn't do that. I, you know, certain things in crime I just do. So I became a, like a militant and I wanted to, my, what I wanted to do was kill as many white people as I could and then die because I knew they would kill me. Mm. So, so when I went to the mosque, Minister Farrakhan's subject was who's Christmas? And he told the whole story of Jesus. Mm. And it, and it lasted for five hours. Mm. And the atmosphere at that time and that, at that, on that day was so warm, it was so, so fiery. And when I saw brothers who were so disciplined, because I had went around to a lot of different organizations to see if I wanted to participate at that time in all kinds of different plays and things they were having. I went to the East Winds on, in Harlem, saw the last poets, and they would perform, and Les Campbell, his brother, and the Panthers, and different groups. 
but there was nothing like the FOI and the MGT. Mm -hmm. I had never yeah. seen that. And everybody I was around was so mad, so angry, so street-like, so hard. And the brothers where they were greeting me were so warm and, and kind. So I sat down and for, for five hours, I was on the end of my seat and I didn't want it to end. So it ended and just when they were getting ready to close out, a brother brought Minister Farrakhan a letter and he opened it up and he read it and it's from some Jewish employer. And he was telling the minister that because of what he was saying, he was gonna fire all the black people who worked for him. So all of a sudden it hit me like, whoa, we're gonna have to go here and deal with him. Mm. And the, the minister's response was so beautiful. And it, it, it was just the opposite of what I was thinking. He got up to the microphone and he said, so you say you wanna um, um, fire all the black people that work for you. He said, good. He said, I hope you lay them all off. He says that I will get up and do something for ourselves. And that really, touched me. So we went downstairs and I sat in the Salam restaurant and I had my back to the window. And Minister Farrakhan came and he sat down right in front of me. And we started to talk and he, he, um, he put his hands out to shake my hand, but he put two hands it was a two hand handshake. And I had never had a handshake like that before. I was like slap five and daddy <laughs> oh, you know. And, <laughs> yes, and he had been teaching for five hours. So it almost felt like it was electricity coming out of his hands. They were so warm and his smile, the way he looked at me was so loving. So I had this big Afro at the time. And um, I said to him, you know, such an honor to meet you. And he said, no, brother, it's an honor for me to meet you. Mm, mm, and I had never had anybody had that kind of humility when I talked to them. So if I was to take my index finger and my thumb, I could have fit in between it. I just felt that small, but not in a bad way. And something happened to me internally. It was like Chris would say you had a born again experience. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's what I had something like that. And I've never been the same again. That's what that was the beginning of the death of Daryl Oliver and the, and the birth of Brother Amin Muhammad, which was, Amin was to come down the line. I became Daryl X. And I went up to the, the temple the next day. I was so excited, I went back and I went to see Brother Clark and I asked him, could I have a copy of the, uh, of the of the meeting Sunday, who's Christmas? He said, well, I don't know, we have to ask the minister. So he said, but you know what, he's in his office, let me go and see if, you know, if he'll approve it. So he came back just in a few minutes and he had the tape in his, it was a cassettes and he had them in his hands. He said, he said, yeah, you can have them. And he let me have them. And I said, I am so thankful to all of you. I said, I, you know, just a whole new environment and so much warmth uh, and for the first time for a long time i was happy i hadn't been happy in a long time yes sir you yes know, sir all the different, and um he, he he said don't thank me he said thank this man and he pointed to a picture of the most honorable elijah muhammad on the wall and so i said wow you're the one who did this why are you pointing to him I didn't understand, you know. <laughs> so he said, you should get the book message to the black man. So I bought the book message to the black man and I went home and I was supposed to buy a Christmas tree. My mother had asked me to buy a Christmas tree, which I wasn't gonna buy. And when I went home, she said, where's the tree? I said, mom, I couldn't buy one. And she said, I knew, I, I, I bought one. So she had one in the living room. Somehow she figured out that I wasn't going to buy a Christmas tree. How she figured that out, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my first time at the mosque, my first experience with Minister Farrakhan. And then somebody came and tapped him 
and he had to leave. So that's about all we got a chance to say to each other. But the impact of it, you know, needless to say, so many people know the impact that his energy, his spirit, his love has on you. You know, it's very memorable. And I, by with Allah's help, I'll never forget it. Beautiful. Praise be to Allah. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So once you once you accepted the teachings, how did your family and friends feel about that, Brother Amin? My mother was glad. My father always liked the Muslims. So he was happy. My sister thought I was crazy. My grandmother and grandfather thought I was crazy. They are from the Caribbean. Mm. So um, she said, I raised you on pork. Are you eat hand you down full? You know, and, and my father's from, and my grandfather's from St. Vincent, St. Vincent, my grandmother's from Jamaica. So there's a lot of things that I was explaining to them, but they didn't like, but that didn't last very long. You know, after, after a while, it seemed like they didn't, didn't make any difference to them. So they saw how much I had changed, how I cleaned my life up and that kind of thing. Beautiful. And my, my, friend, my friends thought I was crazy. Mm. Okay, yes, sir. My next question I wanted to ask you, sir, is once this is you said 1972. Yes, sir. Did you ever get a chance to see the most honorable Elijah Muhammad? Yes, sir. Okay, let us know about that. Let us know about that. Well, what happened was I I was in between schools. I in 71 and 72, I was up in Williamstown, Massachusetts. I was going to a college called Williams College. And so at the end of that, I wanted to transfer because it was two, what they call white waspy. Mm. And that means white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And just a few black people. And I, I was having a lot of problems up there. So I transferred to Morehouse College in Atlanta. Mm. So I was in between, I was getting ready to leave in a few weeks. That was, you know, the, the end of December. And in the beginning of January, I headed down to um, some more house. And it's very interesting. I, I was walking on the street between Spellman and Morehouse. And there was a brother selling um, Muhammad Speaks. And he was talking to his sister and they had to stand there a long time and I wanted to buy a paper. So I went up and I asked him, could I buy a paper? And he said, yes. And I heard what they were talking about. And she was a, a, a sister who was a Sunni Muslim. And so I asked him, could I respond to what she just said? And he was so impressed with, you know, how I handled her with the respect I showed her, with what are some things I had learned that he said, I want you to come to the mosque with me. So I said, okay, he took my address. I was living off campus. And he said, I'll pick you up on Wednesday night. So Wednesday night came and I wasn't home. I had forgot, mm. you know, <laughs> yes, I, was, I was the fish now that forgot like so many did have done to me when I, <laughs> when I <laughs> went to pick them up. Yes, sir. But he came back the next Wednesday and I wasn't there. And he came back the next one day and I was. And he said, brother, you told me you was gonna come to the mosque. So I said, okay, I got you, you right. And I went to the mosque and it was a Wednesday night and it was just me and another brother sitting in, the, in there. And Minister Rockman came out. And I was very surprised because he came out with an FOI uniform, a beige one. Mm, mm. And he was teaching hard, like it was full. And he was saying some things that looked like he would just knew just what to say to me, mm. you know. And one of the things I remember was that he started talking about, and, 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 and we don't fornicate in here. And I didn't know what that meant. I had been raised a Catholic. They didn't really talk about fornication. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, I heard of adultery, but I never heard of fornication. Mm. So after it was over, I asked the brother, I said, what does that mean? He told me what it meant. And so I said, I mean, if I come in here, I can't do that no more. I didn't know I, <laughs> I said, I didn't know I couldn't do that no more. So, cause my plans were, I was a, I was a pre-med student. 
And when I came down there, I wanted to work in the Mess Messengers Hospital. Mm. But that gave me, I had about two more years left for school. So I, my, my plan was to, to smoke a lot of dope, study hard, and to add that the ratio of women to men at that time in Atlanta was supposed to be seven to one. Mm. And to just enjoy all the female company. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, but when I heard that, I submitted. Mm. And I wrote my letter and started processing. And the brother, his name was Brother James 17X. And I'll never forget him. And his wife was Sister Hazel. And she was a sister captain. Mm, mm. She was the regional captain at that time. Two beautiful people. And what they did, that was January. And so they, the, the, the first lieutenant told me, he said, brother, you gonna come with us to save this day? I didn't know what save this day was. Mm, mm. And I said, okay. And so he said, you, you coming with me. And so I wound up going to save this day in 1973. And that's when I saw the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And what a savior's day, brother. Yes, I think sir, we were yes, in the, the Jones Armory or something like that. And to see all of these brothers and sisters, thousands. And when the messenger came out, I had just walked in and I heard this thunderous applause and people was up on their feet clapping and saying all praises due to Allah. Sisters was crying. And I looked at that man and brother, he was glowing. Mm -hmm. I had never seen a man like that glow in my life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And out of all that he taught that day, the most thing that penetrated my heart, and it was the way he said it, he said, I love you. Mm, mm, mm. And then tears started rolling down my cheeks. And I said to myself, you know, I love you too. And that was my experience with him. It was from the audience way back, but in the heart, it was very close. Beautiful. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Uh, my sister, sister Lovett uh, says, I'm like him. Sister Miriam says, I'm like him. Brother Daniel E. Muhammad says, I'm like him. Yes, um, that's impressive. And my sister Naima says that's something like him as well. Beautiful. Um, praise be to Allah. Okay, my next question, um, and Sister Minister Aisha says Richard L. Jones, uh, Richard L. Jones Armory. That's where it was at. Oh. Richard, okay. Yes, sir. Okay, my next question is 1975 comes, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad departs. How did that affect you and your family, sir? Greatly. Because I didn't I didn't know about any of this stuff. I was pretty new. And the brothers were saying, you know, you know the message is gonna leave. You know, sometime soon he's gonna leave. And I, I thought it would be the kind of thing like he was on an airplane and he'd be waving at the believers <laughs> saying goodbye. <laughs> I was that green. I just didn't understand, you know. So when when he left on that Savior's Day, when he departed, I was on post at the mosque because they needed some brothers to stand, to stand, stay back and stand post at the mosque on Bankhead mm. Highway. Mm. So I had, I had paid for everything for, for me and my wife. And, but I said, okay, I'll stay because nobody was raising their hand to volunteer. And another brother, he raised his hand. So the two of us, we stayed there. And the captain, um, his name was Lawson at that time. He became um, Ben Asid, what a man. But anyway, mm. He gave me some instructions. He said, don't let no white people come up on this property or anybody. Mm, so I said, mm. yes, sir. And we had a radio and they, and they said on the radio, Elijah Muhammad is dead. So we didn't believe it. We thought this was a, one of the worst tricks the devil was pulling. Mm, mm. You know, cause they would come out lying about a lot of things just before Savior's Day. And so I had become aware of that. So I thought they were lying. I didn't believe it. And um, then when I got home that evening, man, there was a believers who stayed in Atlanta and watched it somewhere downtown or some kind of hookup or something. And so they were saying, man, you know, he, he really did die. Mm -hmm. So it broke my heart. 
It broke my heart. So I went home, I talked to my wife and we were dumbfounded. We didn't know what to do, you know. And so when the believers came back from Chicago, they were happy. And they said, man, what a transition of power. No yeah. bloodshed, you know, like some, some nations and everything is smooth. We have a new leader. What so they said was um, Wallace Muhammad at that time. Yes, so sir. they said everybody's gonna, um, you know, accept it. We have to accept his leadership. So I said, okay. So we went on and um, we started, um, you know, continue going to the mosque and everything. And um, what happened was it became springtime and my wife and I, we moved to back to New York City. And then a year later, we, we, we was attending the mosque there in Corona. And there's a brother there named Brother Alton. He, he was, he's from the Bronx. And he was, became the minister there at Corona 7B. So we was going in, everything was going on like normal. And I became what they called at that time, a courier. And that means that we sold a thousand papers a week. Mm, mm, and it. the brothers had stopped selling papers just about, you know, when I looked at something from the Apollo one night, I saw head, head pieces swinging in brothers partying, you know, like clapping around. So I, I knew something was wrong. So we used to go up to 7A in Manhattan, up in Harlem, and pick up the papers in a warehouse. And there were several brothers that we did that from Queens, and they had some brothers from Brooklyn and from the Bronx. And um, we'd all go out in our respective boroughs. And so we was, we was doing that. And I decided to move to Phoenix because at that time in New York City, New York had a mayor named Bean and New York City defaulted. And people were out of work. People couldn't pay their bills. Some of the elderly people, the water froze in their toilets and people were robbing their mailboxes from their checks. And they were committing suicide, leaving suicide. We can't live like this no more. We're eating cat food. We don't have no water. And they commit suicide and they dress up and however they did it, and they find them dead on their beds. Children, mothers were sending children to school with bulletproof vests on. So I said, I'll never send, I had little children. And I said, I'll never send them to school with a bulletproof, it's time for us to leave. So mm -hmm. it was a brother and sister used to say they were gonna to move to Phoenix. And I used to joke with him. I said, I had nothing out there but cowboys and Indians. I'm not moving <laughs> to no Phoenix. <laughs> yes, sir. And, um, but finally we decided we we're gonna to go to Phoenix. So my father helped me buy a van and put it together because it, it couldn't move. It was a junk old school bus van but he was a mechanic, so he helped me put it together and we made a little bed in it for our two children, um, Connie and Farad, and we put barrels around them and put all our stuff in the barrels that we had. And then we headed to Phoenix. And we, I said, it was, if I know um, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has a home there and if, if he lived there, something special, something, something, something about there, you know, and I saw, so we moved there and I started attending the mosque on Buckeye Road. And I just couldn't piece together Islam and the way it was being taught and the things that were being said. I just couldn't handle it. So I left, I wouldn't go no more. And I tried to call the minister and I, I couldn't get him, but I got Mother Khadija. And I, this is what she said, I'll tell her how wise she is. I said, hello, I mean, Salam Aleikum. Could I speak to Brother Abdul Halim Farrakhan? Mm. And she said, you mean Lewis? I said, no, I mean, Brother Abdul Halim 
fire car. Because mm. I well, he had given him a different name. And so when she said that, then I knew something was up. And I said, I'm, well, maybe you could help me. I'm having some trouble out at this mosque here, what they're teaching. And I didn't know that he was you know, getting ready to start rebuilding. Mm -hmm. So she said, brother, if you have problems there, you don't like it, don't go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I said, okay. And I, I stopped going and, and that was pretty much it. Yes, sir. Okay, amazing. I, I, we, we, we got so much more to catch up on. So many people are in the comments. My uh, sister, no GMO. Some people just like, I think everybody who continues to like, share, subscribe to the People's Podcast. And I can't wait. To I mean, okay, yes, sir. So, Mosan Elijah Muhammad departs. You and your family go from uh, New York to Phoenix. Yes, talking about the Farrakhan. When did you um, reconnect with the Mosan Bin Sul's Farrakhan? When, how did that connection come back? <laughs> oh, I like that question. One day, my wife and I were driving. It was a Sunday. So we, play, we passed this place called the Neighborhood House. And Brother um, Jabril, that's where he was having meetings. And so I saw some people that kind of looked like Muslims, but I wasn't sure. So I said, we're going to go there next, next Sunday. It was just around 2 o'clock. And so we went in, and it was, it was Brother Jabril in the, um, and what we call that time the circle. Hmm. And you know, was what well, we were in Mars 32, we just called a circle. And Brother Jabril wasn't there because he used to do a lot of traveling in those days. He'd be going all over, especially to California, especially to Los Angeles. And so he would have different brothers um, teach. And I was so impressed because these young brothers was knew so much. And I was wondering, how did they know so much? But I didn't know how much Brother Jabril knew. I didn't, I had never met him yet. Mm. <laughs> you know, so about I think the next Sunday when we went back, he was there. So I went up to talk to him. And he said, uh, do you think I'm crazy? So I didn't know why he asked me that. I said, no. <laughs> I don't know you. I, I said, I hope you're not crazy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and so he said, okay. And he asked me a few questions. And then, um, you know, we, we were so happy, you know, because Wallace had told us to close our books. And I opened up my books again, and everything started making sense again to me. And uh, we started coming. And, um, and then that's how finally I got to meet Minister Farrakhan again. Because he he was he used to come to Phoenix in those days quite a bit, and that's before we got the house back or anything like that. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. And and I want to make sure that I thank you, uh, brother. I mean, on behalf of myself, my family, and the view and audience for your sacrifice and the sacrifices of your family, sir. We thank you uh, for for standing strong and reconnecting to help uh, hold the nation of Islam up you know, in the early, early days and, and, and even till now. So we thank you very much, sir. Oh, praise and due to Allah, brother. Yes, sir. Okay, so now, did the minister remember you from being the young man that he met with the Afro when he came to Phoenix? Absolutely. Okay. He doesn't okay. forget people, brother. He don't forget people. Yes, sir. Some yes, people sir. walk up and say, do you know me? He said, yeah, I know you. I know your mother, your father. He said, <laughs> absolutely. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Praise be to Allah. Okay. My next question is, in this time, during all of this, the transitions uh, prior to 75 to then, even up till now, have you ever been faced with fear? And if so, how did you overcome that fear? Yes, sir. I think I've been faced with fear. And it's something that the minister told me that, uh, you know, about fear. He was saying all of us are afraid of something, but face it, face your fear. And you'll find yourself getting stronger. Oh, and so that's it. When I was in Atlanta, we used to go and sell papers that Muhammad Speaks, you know, different other states. And one time I went up to South Carolina and there was a place there called Cash and Carry, a kind of grocery store. And a lot of black people go, so let's stop here. So um, I started selling papers and immediately some sheriff pulled up. 
and he looked at me and he started taunting me. And he took a shotgun and he held it up and, and put it in my direction. So I started selling papers even harder. Bam, mm -hmm. bam, bam. And you know, they drove away. Yes, sir. So, you know, like he said, you don't run from difficulty or fear, you, you face it and you run to it. And that's the way I, I practice. Beautiful. By, by Allah's grace. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And and we, I'm just always fascinated in hearing all of you all who had to meet and overcome those type of obstacles and pray that myself and our generation and the generations after us are as strong as you are to face sheriffs and guns and things like that in nature. So I thank a lot for you and your, and your family, sir. Praise be to yes, Allah. Yes, sir. And you know something too, brother? I thought that, you know, when I when became a Muslim, they were, most of the brothers that I knew were so fearless at that time. And in uh, uh, 73 in June, there was a brother from New York that I became close to. His name was brother Ken 2X Dozier. And we used to sell papers down on Peachtree Street in Atlanta. And the devils at that time, we called them the devils. And they came down to police and they had a, a, a fight. And Brother Kenneth got the gun from the devil in the fight and, and shot him, but he emptied all six bullets into him. Mm. So he didn't have no bullets left to shoot nobody else. So the cops shot him and killed him. And the messenger wrote an article about it because he had stopped writing a lot of articles at that time. They were, you know, reprints, very powerful, but they were reprints. He wrote a special article it's called the God, the God of arms is the might of this world. And it's a, a very tough arm. And he said that to show you how much the devil hates you, he'll, he'll cut up your dead body. So I knew that they had cut him up. And um, so I wasn't down there that particular day. And I used to work at a boys club in a neighborhood that was called Vine City. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm familiar. Which is now called the bluff. Yes, sir. I'm familiar. <laughs> yes, sir. And so I was walking down the street from work and I had my little Muhammad speaks under my hand and the brothers were driving around trying to round up all the brotherhoods. We didn't have cell phones. And they saw me and they said, brother, get in the car. And I saw how serious they was. So we got in the car. We drove down to the mosque on Bankhead Highway. We used to call it the temple at that time. Mm. And so we went down there and they had us line up all around the building on post just in case they came down there and tried to attack. And that night, um, they had a meeting and the interesting thing was so many brothers didn't come back. Mm. They never came back and that surprised me. But we had the biggest, remember I tell you we just meet another brother on a Wednesday night? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The place was overcrowded with new guests, and we had so many acceptances that night to show you how Allah works. Allah works. So we don't have to be afraid. We just have to have strong faith in Allah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and, and stay the course. Beautiful. Praise be to Allah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And are you still connected with any of the the believers that you had met in, during your time in in New York or in Atlanta before you went to Phoenix? Yes, sir. Well. So a lot of them are dead, brother, believe it or not. And mm. um, but the, 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 there are a few that I'm, I'm in contact with right now, you know, who I still talk to. I think you interviewed one of them, Brother Mutaka Bear. Oh, yes, sir. Okay, you still okay, yes, sir. You still cool, with Brother Mutaka Bear, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, he's one of my teachers. <laughs> yes, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I've, I've been blessed to be trained, uh, go to one of his training sessions. Very intense, yes, sir, yes, sir. Very intense, brother. <laughs> yeah, he used to run me in a park called Baisley Park late at night, wrap my hands up and make me throw punches while we were running. And all he would say to me, brother, you got to train regardless. you know and exposed me to a lot of different training 
that he was involved in. Beautiful. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. We have a, we have a few more questions for you, brother. I mean, but I have a quick sixty second commercial break for all yes, of the sir. sponsors of the People's Podcast that help keep that help keep us going. I want to thank you all. If you all would like to be a sponsor or a donor, please cash app the People's Podcast. Thank you very much. Every donation, every like, share, and subscribe is definitely appreciated. Uh, please cash up the People's Podcast. My brother Rashad, Street Premier Media Production. He has a 4K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. Please reach out to him if you need anything. My sister Miriam, ABC I Love Me, children's book and coloring book, both of which are available on Amazon. Please go out and get those. Also, my sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet. And right here in the studio in Atlanta, Georgia, we love our tiny dancers. Um, Student Minister Robert L. Muhammad of Austin, Texas, dealing with conflict mediation, squashing the beef throughout um, Austin in the Southwest region. He does a phenomenal job. Please reach out to him if you need any of that. Um, Sister Fudia Muhammad, his wife, children of the most high, giving birth to a guy in the science of child rearing. Please get that, order that book as well. Also, Sister Sherry Muhammad, asiaticminds.com. It's a virtual school that teaches STEM to young children, young kings and queens all across the country. Please sign your children up to asiaticminds.com. Fashion Gods, Urban Streetwear Clothing for Men and Boys, uh, 314-329-6009. Please reach out to our brother. He'll keep you fresh with some clothes. Dr. Henry M. Carter, right here in Atlanta, Georgia, King Henry's Turkey Legs. Brother Rashad Muhammad, COVID-19 Disinfecting Cleaning Services out of Chicago, Illinois. My father book, my father's books, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ and Down Is Not Out, both of which are available at abdulsharif.com. And last but not least, my two books, Cleopatra with the K, which is a children's book, and No Father, No Excuse. Thank you all very much for every sponsor, don donation, like, share, and subscribe. Okay, boom, right back to you, Brother Amin. My next yes, question sir. is, how did, you, how did you get the name Brother Amin? I got the name Brother Amin Muhammad from Minister Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. He, um, we was in a big meeting one day and, and a lot of people had names. And, I, and my wife and I, we didn't have a name. So he said, brother, I mean, you don't have a name? And I said, no, sir. He said, well, you do now. He said, see me after the meeting. So I went to him after the meeting and he held my hands and he looked at me and he said, I mean. Mm. He said, will you accept that name? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> so he said, I have one for your wife too. Mm. And so. I, I did it like in them cartoons, beep, beep, and she was right there in front of him, and he held her hands and he said, Amina. And that's how I, that's how we got our name. That's how I got my name. All praise is due to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, uh, okay. My, and thank everybody who seems to watch. What do you do for fun, brother? I mean, what do I do for fun? Okay. Well, we we know if you've ever, ever heard Minister Farrakhan's comment in. Closing the Closing gap. The gap. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, you know, sir. It, it can be nonsense. So. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. The things I enjoy is being with my family and then my extended family of the believers. So when I'm with them, I'm enjoying myself. And then we might do any kind of go to a trip, travel to California, ride through the beautiful state of Arizona, go to Sedona, you know, sit out in the park. Um, We've even gone to, I, 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 I'll admit it, but it sounds silly to me. Yeah, we've been to Disneyland and SeaWorld. Sea and brother, those, that doesn't sound silly to me. That's my favorite place to visit. <laughs> I'm always in Disney World. You can always catch me at Disney World, brother. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> I'm a big we fan of Disney to, World, brother. Yes, sir. <laughs> the Grand Canyon and, you know, things like that. I, I'm not very much of a night person, you know, like going out anywhere at night, but a lot of day things. and. I had read something that Wallace, um, the E-man wrote one time in his Belalian News. And he said that the natural creation is a natural mind stimulant. And that's one reason why I wanted to move to Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Because when I was living in New York City, you couldn't even see the stars at night back then. Mm -hmm. You look up in the sky and it was so much pollution and smog and so many lights, you just didn't see any stars. And I said, I hate it and all these tall buildings. You know, I used to call it the concrete jungle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I said, I'm moving to Phoenix where my children can see cows and horses and forests and um, cactuses and palm trees. And they have a lot of different kind of um, terrain out here in Arizona. You know, took a, we were going up to, to go sled riding. 
in the snow when it's you know cold. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That kind of stuff. So that, that's kind of what we do. I, I swim. I was a swimmer from high school, a competitive swimmer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I swam in college. You know, so I'd like to swim. Praise be so a lot. Okay. Yes, sir. And and how did having children to grandchildren to great grandchildren? How did that impact your life, sir? Woo, brother. <laughs> Man, that's the biggest impact, I think, in terms of family, man. You know, like, um, you know, it's a beautiful thing. Your children are beautiful, but it's hard for them to accept the discipline and get the kind of foundation that we, that we really want them to have in these teachings to be able to ward off and the, um, the wiles of Satan. So we've experienced that as parents, you know, to see our children um, go wayward and be in the world. So when they were little, they were just the most beautiful, sweetest little things you could ever <laughs> imagine. And my wife dressed them so cute. Sometimes she put little pantaloons on them and little suits and ties. And yes, sir. It was beautiful. And the same thing with the grandchildren. But um, they were raised properly, brother, by Allah's grace. And so... Hopefully be, you know, like the prodigal son that came back and, you know, um, I, I have one son that, you know, never went anywhere. They stayed in there beautiful. Mm, mm, and mm. it'd be like them doves that, that Abraham threw out. And he said, when you call them and teach them to incline to you. Yes, sir, they'll, yes, sir. They'll, they'll come flying back. If Allah pleases. <laughs> Praise me to Allah. Yes, sir. Beautiful. What type of music do you like to listen to, Brother Amin? All kind of music. I'm a music lover. Okay, okay. Of all kind, and I love Minister Farrakhan's music. One yes, time sir. he played for me and my wife a personal audience, and he played um, the lessons I learned from my mother on his violin. Mm, you know, mm. he, he has come to his house about four nights in a row that he did that because my son had got killed, one of my children. And uh, I guess he wanted to feel us out to see how we were handling it. So four nights in a row, he was kind enough to invite us and gracious and so warm. And, and he, he played several songs and that was one of them. So that's one of my favorite by him because he's so wonderful. And one time we traveled with him to Palm Springs and there was a man named they were Giro Ricci and he was a student of Paganini. That's all I know, I don't think I know a lot about all of this, but I know <laughs> <laughs> I knew them. And I actually had the, the the great blessing and privilege to go in with him and watch him, watch Rogerio Ricci teach him some things about playing the violin. And um that was quite an experience, brother, you know. Um just to watch your teacher be a student. What a beautiful student he is. Oh, yes, sir. Jesus. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Okay. Well, brother, I mean, I want I want to touch on that. Um, uh, my brother was shot. Man, I, I spoke with my cousin, my blood cousin earlier. I interviewed him about many believers that came up in the nation, nation babies who have you know lost their lives, and he was saying how he washed the bodies and things of that nature. As a parent, how how did you how did you get over that? How did you heal? And what advice would you give to other people who are dealing with the loss of young people? Well, well, I have Islam and I have Allah, you know, and the minister taught me, you know, that we have to accept Allah and life is a part of death and death is a part of life. They serve each other. So, you know, it's difficult. It hurts. You know, he was just 25 years old and, um, my wife took it so hard. My man, a mother, ah, Allah, you know, and it, and it hurt me a lot too. But I know that if Allah permitted it, something good was going to happen out of it, and a lot of good has come out of it. You know, this is not what this show is about, but a lot of good has come out of it. You know, he's a very lovely young man, and um, we miss him still. You know. We talk about him a lot. Praise be to Allah. Beautiful, yes, sir. sir. Beautiful. Allah Akbar. Okay, yes, sir. Allah. 
what what has been the greatest joy in your life, sir? The greatest joy in my life was something something along the lines of what Minister Farrakhan says: having enough sense to accept this teaching. Mm, mm. Beautiful, yes, sir. And and brother, I mean, what would you like your legacy to be? My legacy, yes, sir. My legacy, I would like it to be as somebody who loved Allah, loved His Christ, loved His Messiah with all my heart and soul and strength, and that I love my neighbor like I love myself, and that I did all I could. I, I had tried my utmost to do my best to strive to be a Muslim and, and, and serve humanity, especially my, my people, to the best that I could. That's what I would like. And pass it on to my children and, and others. Beautiful. Praise be to Allah. Amazing, Thanks. brother. I mean. And brother, I mean, I, I look forward to inshallah. I, I, I pray, I pray that I get to meet you. Uh, I have some family in Phoenix, and I, I travel there, and I would like to uh, meet you just to uh, have a conversation with you in person, sir, if that's possible. Well, thank you, brother. I would look forward to that. I would be honored to do that. You know, I know your dad pretty well. Okay. In the early days, when the minister used to come to Phoenix, he didn't have the E team as such. Mm. So your father was one of the ones who used to travel with him almost everywhere. And they used to call him William and Rodney. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so <laughs> I used to start to travel with them too, you mm. know, and, um, and go around. And and I, I, we went to uh, LA so much that they thought the minister was coming from Chicago, but he'd be coming from Phoenix. So they thought I was from Chicago. Mm. And they, they, were, they were very surprised. But um, you have a very lovely, hardworking, um, father that I just admire so much and love so much, brother. Praise you know, we, we have history together, you know. Wonderful, yes, sir. Beautiful Praise man. Praise be to Allah. And, and I your always, mom. Thank you, sir. And I always say to the people, uh, the believers that I'm blessed to interview uh, who know my parents, I say we have to meet your children and your grandchildren so that we can keep, the, you know, everybody connected. Because when I went to when I went to Phoenix the last time I was there, uh, a sister called me my brother's name because he lived in Phoenix for so long. And she, I was like, no, she was like, you look just like, I was like I, you know, you never know who, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what's going on and who's who. So it's always good to know the believers from all around the nation and around the yes, world. Sir. Uh, I want to thank you again, brother. I mean, yes, sir. Uh, my, my pleasure. Man, it's been an honor for uh, you coming on the podcast. Thank everybody who's watching. I can't wait to put this on YouTube. Um, this is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Well, alaikum salam, dear brother. Thank you again. Yes, sir.